We don't have enough resin in Genshin Impact. At least, that's the general consensus in this community. Resin is a precious resource in this game. It determines how your game pans out each day. Will you spend your resin on bosses, weapon materials, or are you just trying to spam the tenacity domain for a good hydro piece for your DPS Yelan? Please, Hoyaverse, it's been like six months. Please give me something better than this. Whatever the case, it's the worst feeling when you run out of resin, but you still want to be on Genshin Impact. So let's talk about it. Today I'm going to be going over 12 things you can do while you're completely and utterly resinless. Ready? Let's go. Unless you're somebody who 100% everything on the first day that a new region comes out, chances are you're missing a chest or an oculus somewhere. It's something you've been putting off doing, but desperate times call for desperate measures. You may as well spend some time trying to up your exploration as much as you can. It'll be relaxing. Genshin Impact is a casual game, so after a long day, you can sit down in your room with some HyperX headphones on and listen to the ambience of Genshin while you explore. Or your favourite Spotify playlist, not gonna judge. Are you building up a character right now and you want to see how they're doing? Or do you want to see if you can beat your overall damage record? Now's a good time to do so since there's nothing else you can do right now. Head over to floor 7 or wherever you personally go to do your showcases and try your luck. If you're a newer player thinking, how can I see how much damage I can do? Head over to your achievements and scroll down. This achievement updates whenever you get a new highest crit. A good form of resinous behaviour is to look for lower AR players looking for help. Before getting to AR 55 and above, things are more difficult to do without the additional help. I know that when I was a low AR player, I couldn't do the level 90 emblem domain without my friends helping me out. You get over it though when you play for long enough, so if you're in that position, don't worry, you'll get there eventually. But the path to being a high AR player who can one-shot everything if they really want to isn't always a solo road. Some people just need the help to get there. You'll be able to find lower AR players to help out in a couple of different ways. The first way is to refresh the co-op list until you see a lower AR player with a bio saying something along the lines of, I need help doing X, Y, and Z. The second way is to be a part of Genshin communities online. For instance, you can join the official Genshin Impact Discord server and see if anyone needs help. Alternatively, you can join my Discord server and do the same thing. Whatever you want, really. Each region has their own set of reputation rewards, and each region has 10 levels of said reputations for you to achieve in order to get these rewards. You'll be able to fight things via bounties and do requests for NPCs as you work your way up to the next level. Best of all, reputations are completely resinless, so they're perfect to do if you don't have any resin. The only downside to reputations though is that it's a weekly activity, meaning that you're capped with how much you can work towards a reward for, but at least it will add something to your daily routine, sometimes. If you're extremely bored and you feel like fighting things, head on over to the enemy guide. Select an enemy of your choosing and proceed to exhaust that said enemy's drops. You'll go to selected places of the region you're currently in to fight these things until they no longer appear on your minimap. Once that happens, repeat that with even more enemies. Proceed to do that until there are no more monsters appearing up on your minimap. If you farm more than one enemy this way, this will add a lot of time to your daily Genshin routine in a completely resinless way. After all, at some point, somebody's gonna need these drops. You can also head over to the Genshin interactive map to farm more drops, since Genshin itself doesn't actually show you all the locations of where these enemies are. Alternatively, you can go to Inazuma and farm only Kabuto, or go to the desert and farm some scarabs. If you haven't attempted Spiral Abyss already this patch, or even at all, ever, Spiral Abyss is another resinless activity for you to do. It gives you a good benchmark of how your characters are doing, and overall, where you're at. 
It's a great tool for you to use to see where you need to improve on things. For instance, you may need to start thinking about building more characters, for example. Maybe you only have four characters with decent builds, and you can't get past floor five until you make another good team. Perhaps there's a certain element that you've neglected. Maybe you just can't seem to reach floor 10, or maybe you can't get any stars on floor 12. Whatever the case may be, Spiral Abyss may seem intimidating, but it's a useful thing for you to do if you haven't gotten round to it yet. Oh, and it does give you primos, so there's that too. Even if you don't pay for the battle pass, it still gives you decent rewards like books, resin, and even a wish on an occasion. While some battle pass tasks do need resin, others don't. Battle pass tasks range from event-specific tasks to fighting weekly bosses three times, meaning that you can go and fight weekly bosses, and once you've defeated them, you can come out of that domain without spending resin, and it will still count towards that reward. So whatever battle pass tasks you have outstanding right now, go and do them if you're feeling particularly resinless right now. The battle pass tasks reset every week as well, so just keep that in mind. If you're like me, you don't like doing side quests straight away. In fact, this one is from when Inazuma first released. You save your side quests for a rainy day. A rainy day where you feel bored enough to finally get it out of your quest backlog. Now rinse and repeat for the tens of others of quests that you have in there. And this isn't even including story quests or hangout quests. I find that I love hangout quests and story quests with my favourite characters. The others? They're kind of a chore to go through, but I digress. No matter what quest you do, you're guaranteed to get something out of it, from Mora and Lore to books and Prima Gems. So get cleaning, I guess. If you haven't already done anything with your teapots, you really should. Not just because I have a slight bias towards virtual interior design, but because you can rank up in the teapot itself and get rewards from that. If you care about furniture sets, you can get primos for building them for certain characters. And you can also build multiple realm layouts, in case you thought you were completely done with your current build. Whatever the case, give the teapot a chance if you haven't already. It can become slightly addictive if you get into the swing of things. It's nice to have a roster of name cards in case you wanted to change up your aesthetic of your profile every now and again. Whether you want to start your journey of getting the TCG name card, if there's a name card for a certain event happening right now, or if you want to get a new character's name card. There isn't a card in Genshin that you can't be working towards right now. You can spam friendship EXP if you're looking to get a character name card. And if you aren't already up to date with the TCG, you can also spam matches as well. If you find that you're playing with the same characters and the same teams every day, and you're somebody who has multiple characters built, playing with new characters is something that you won't regret doing. Maybe you could even get your top support characters and a level 1 Hazo and see how much damage he can do. You get the picture. The team comp doesn't even have to make any sense. Any team works in the overworld. So go crazy. Build a DPS Barbara for a day and knock yourself out. If there's really absolutely nothing else for you to do, and you've tried everything on this list, chances are you're just trying to squeeze content out of a game that you've already completed the content for, at least for the next few weeks or so. So relax, do your dailies and then go and head off and play another game, then come back to the game tomorrow. Forcing yourself to play will only lead to burnout and it may cause you to leave the game for longer than you might think, so just control your Genshin obsession a smidge and learn when to stop. It's healthier that way. <laughs>